Oh, hi, uh, I'm Barry Herring. I'm a photographer, and uh, thanks a lot for interviewing me uh, around our show Fragments and Masks. It's a show that I'm having with Richard Mochman, who is a painter, and we're looking at various aspects of how people are presented with their images, and if you're only seeing parts of people, what perceptions do you form? So, for instance, with an image like this, which is a combination of both Richard and I, um, it's, it's interesting when you just look at the bottom of how similar the two people look, but the eyes and the eyebrows are different. So I'm interested in how people are portrayed and the kind of perceptions we form of people when we only see a little bit of them. And then I wondered what would happen if our eye and our brain work differently than it does today? So what would happen if what was important is rather than you seeing the front of me, but actually you saw perhaps the two sides of me, of my head? Or if, for instance, when you saw me, your brain also brought up, say, the last three or four times you saw me, those images. So you saw actually a combination of images. Let me take you over here and show you a similar picture. This is an image that I'm t I was wondering about. And um, if, for instance, say the image, uh, you head of a person came up and it, it also brought up different aspects of the same thing. So this is Michael, and this is like Michael almost waking up with an idea where he, he sees it. I mean, when we see things, we see one static image. But in reality, of course, things keep moving, and there's no reason why our eye and our brain couldn't work differently than it does today, because we know other animals don't see things the way humans see things. Flies and, and spiders are very differently, and even humans themselves, we know, see things differently than we see things. So what would happen if we just saw bits and pieces? Is, so I photographed a number of people, uh, shooting them always the same way. I would shoot them straight on and then have them move around like that, and then I'd look for pieces of them fragments of them perhaps and put them together and I sometimes ask for gestures so I wanted to see well how would this work if your eye and your brain saw things or you just saw pieces of people rather than the whole per people person so I'd like to show you another image over here so for instance w when we look at a photograph like this and we only see part of this woman I mean do you see a woman who's 14 or do you see a woman who's 24 and it makes, it makes me wonder about that. Or if you see a person, a woman like this, and you see tattoos or you see long hair, what sort of perceptions do you form of that person based on just seeing a little person, bit of the person without hearing the person talk or seeing what the person's interested in? And how do we form perceptions of people when we actually just get small glimpses of them? That's what's interested me about this show. And, um, and probably you should talk to uh, Richard, uh, Richard Mochman, who's the other part of the show, who uh, has got some very interesting interactive pieces. So, talk to Richard next. Thanks. Okay, um, I've always, I've, my work has involved a lot of interactive elements in the last yes, few years of, of things opening and things rotating because it, it, it contradicts some of the notions of what painting should be. You shouldn't touch them, they should just be seen all at once. But with these masks, you have to open them up. It takes time, it's brought into the paintings. And I've um, always been interested in in people um, and their sort of the details of them, the imperfections of them, and also, but also how, depending on the social situation you're in, you you hide part of yourself, of your personality. You you put on some sort of some sort of mask. So these are these are real masks, but they're also metaphors for those social things you do. But when you open up, open up the paintings, you get to. Uh, a level of truth of the person, of their face, of their skin, and, and that. And then there's all those little details of uneven eyes and twisted mouths and things that, that just how people are. And that, that fascinates me. And I like one of the virtues of these is that when you have to come up, there's two things. With opening the mask, you're aware of the, the surface, that it's an object, that this painting is an object, but you also have to to come up close and you're in into an intimate relationship with the model because you're up close in this sort of space that you're normally not engaged with the person unless you're very close to them uh, emotionally but this way you get to be in there you get to look at the details of a of a person and be close in their presence by manipulating the mass of the paintings and uh, another key thing of them is that as a viewer you then when you leave the painting 
you you make a decision about what the next person will be seeing. How you how you position the masks on this painting is how it's going to be seen for the next person. You you leave them open, you close it, whatever. So you as a the viewer has to make some be involved in some sort of creative process along with me as the artist. And it's great that paintings. Um, I, I work from photographs. The model comes in and you. Should, um, an unbuttoned shirt and I take some photographs and work from that and then I uh, each model is provides me with either an actual mask if they happen to have it or an image of a mask that relates to something about their their life their interests some about their personalities um, Cindy goes ocean paddle racing in Hawaii so she had to have a, a mask from Hawaii and, and Barry travels to uh, to Mexico every year so that's a big big part of his life so he wanted uh, an Aztec mask and, and that so yeah so he had to have that to open up cover him and reveal him uh, yeah so the mask gives some information about the person if you but it also they also obscure a large part of the person as as, as well as giving something.